So I am having a little me day. Um, I was supposed to get my car washed today, hence the dust here that I is still there. So that didn't work out. Um, but yeah, I just want to talk about because you know my last video was about Kimberell's bullshit. Well, my last major video was about that. Um, and I do want to just kind of keep it on a positive note. I know a lot of people. You know, they liked what I had to say. And then you have people who had their little attitudes too. Um, which is, again, completely fine. I like to have uh, a, 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 something where I can have a conversation. Or, a, you know, there's a dialogue created where we can go back and forth and have... What the fuck is she doing? Um, back and forth about, you know, whatever the situation is at the moment. Or, you know, whatever. But... One thing I think um, amongst everything that's been going on right now that has been missing is love. I think love, where is the love? Where is the love? Maybe I've been listening to Fergie a lot lately, so maybe that's why. Um, but there's a lot of love missing in the world. And you know, I love everybody. I don't hate, people think, oh, you hate Kimberly. I don't hate Kimberly. Actually, I, I still love Kimberly. I just think that she's a big bitch sometimes. And I think, you know, sometimes you are what you say you are you do you know what you do it's just what it is um so for me you know a lot of people took my frustration in that video in a way that they thought oh you just hate everybody who doesn't agree with you and it's not about people who don't because there was a majority agreed with what i had to say gay or not they still agree with what i had to say but the thing that i didn't i don't like to do is be quiet when i know for a fact that i need to say something about something especially when it, it directly affects me it directly pertains to me and it directly is something that has affected me at the point in, in my you know in my life too a U-turn is me. You're supposed to do this, bitch. This box has turn you just did, and you can't drive. Back to the love. Um. So it's one of those things where you know you get to a, a situation where you get frustrated as always being a bit of a punching bag, no matter what. You know, someone says, a book says, a situation. It doesn't matter, you know, because at, at the end of the day, you are a human. I am a human. We have feelings, you know. So when you're feelings, you always are being attacked. You feel, you know, by a group of people or, or individual or whoever. You feel, you know, a certain way. So that's why I express the way that. And again, these platforms like YouTube and Instagram, they're a way to, for us to express how we feel. Just like she used her platform to express how she felt. And that was completely and utterly fine of her. The thing is, when you single out a particular person or particular people, then what ends up happening is that those, no matter what you're speaking about and know how, no matter how good your truth is, is and there's always a way like remember this in life there's always a time when somebody can take your truth and turn it into something else because they feel a way about how you feel about your truth that may pertain to them so i want us in in the new year all of us to just show a lot of love to one another and that is going to be a bit difficult being the fact that you know who's our president now so you know that's going to be a lot of frustration popping off for most of us however i don't think that is going to be very hard um, for we as people, we have overcome bigger and better bullshit. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, yeah, um, as of lately, just with me in general, I've been trying to just kind of keep on a very creative path as a person. Like, I just want to kind of stay on a good up and up with what I'm doing and the things that I'm interested in and stuff like that. Because I feel like often that's what ends up happening is I'll get into this groove where I'm super duper, um creative and then I'll fall out of it and then get an attitude with myself like why did you do that like why did you stop all of the research that you was doing about whatever you were doing why would you stop you know looking for better ways to up your game and and, and better ways to express your creativity or you know be happy or anything just just anything why did you stop doing that and it's, I know as soon as I stop it's just like I get into this funk where I just don't want to do anything and doing YouTube is one of those things that you know, you, it's easy to get lazy 
we could do I could do this all day and there's no problems but when I actually have to do something that requires a thought process it requires me to actually get up and think outside the box that's not just me looking pretty and talking about hair then those are the things that I get the most excited about I'm not really excited about you know how many bundles I have and all that and although it's nice and it definitely uh, lends itself to a portion of my creativity it's not all my creativity and it's not the only thing that I can do as an individual so I feel like you know for me what the fuck what time is it why are they picking up their kids their kids should have been at home um yeah so for me you know I feel like it's just a lot of stuff that I want to get to and and kind of get into to just just push myself to be better push myself to be a better individual push myself to be a better me no matter what the situation is who it is who it's with who it's not with you know that whole thing so this year my goal is to be as creative as i can now you if i hit you on this bike then you can take your motherfucking ass elsewhere whoa 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 dude calm down i don't want to kill nobody so you know that's really where i'm at with it that's how happy i'm trying to be in the new year is just to, to, to push myself not nobody else i remember last year during this time it was one of those things where i was trying to push other people to be better but they didn't necessarily want to push themselves and then you know when you have friends i feel like this is so much better because y'all can see me better because it's getting dark and it's only five o'clock um but I feel like, you know, when you're in a situation and you have a group of friends and you guys are in, um, you know, you guys are very close. When you start trying to push people and they're not even like nudging their self, it becomes a very big issue and a very big problem to try to do. So for me as a person, what I always try to do is, and I'm learning to do, I guess would you, you would say that, I'm learning to do is put... This must be your car. Is this fucking wheel? Anyway, um, yeah, I just want to learn how to and keep pushing myself to do better things and do and do greater things with myself. That's what I want to do. I don't want to necessarily be one of those people who are I'm trying to push a friend to do something that they just legit don't want to do or they want to do it but they want you to grab their legs and then pull them the whole fucking way and it's like bitch I only weigh 105 pounds I can barely push my motherfucking self so you think I'm about to push your mother no bitch I'm a strong bitch but it's in all in the mind okay not physically just all in the mind so, I, you know, it's, it's stuff like that that I think people don't understand and realize about uh, just following your dreams in, in general. You know, it, it becomes a thing. And then this, uh, again, to my point, this time last year, I was in such an ugly place. And not ugly with myself, but just people who are around me. I was very unhappy with kind of some of the decisions that I had made the previous year. And I really had no reason to be mad of than other than myself because I'm the one who put myself there but it just became one of those things where I just do feel sometimes that you know I I will admit this I am a person who pushes people or I'm a little bossy when it comes to certain things because if I know a person can do something and I see that they're just resting on their laurels and they don't really too much care about trying it pisses me off just because I know in life I've tried so much to do so many things to try to make my life a better place and do better things it kind of turns into why can't you just get it why don't you understand that what is what why don't you understand that life could be better if you would let it you know so when I see a person who acting like I don't really give a fuck and I don't care then it, it pisses me off you know so then I get into a point where I'm just like this is getting ridiculous like you want some oh I don't give a fuck shit because you're lazy and just say that but then when they have 85 excuses as to why the world is not in their favor then I start to get it like ain't, ain't nobody fucking handed me nothing either so you sitting there acting like I'm just the one that's speaking from a, a rich privileged kids point of view like I don't have you know what I'm saying no no type of information I've never been in your situation and that's totally the furthest thing from the truth but that's what people like to do they like to play the victim and I'm, I'm not I'm not mm -mm. I'm not playing the victim I'm sorry honey. I'm not doing that so yeah but 
I just, you know, I like to do whatever my, comes to mind. You know, if I want to shoot something one day, I'll shoot it. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. And that's like the rest of the world. I get lazy too. I don't want to do certain things too. I got an attitude too. But it's what it is. And you learn. The thing is, when you learn from your mistakes, then you, you're supposed to. Well, that's how it's not. Oh, that is real cute. Um, but it's, you know, you, you learn to be a better person when you do better. When you know better, you do better. And some people don't want to know better, so they're not doing any better. They're doing, they're just maintaining. Um, a lot of you guys have asked me, like, kind of how the dogs are doing. Like, every time I do Instagram Live, like, oh, I always do it usually when the dogs are asleep. Just because... When they're up, I, we're running around and acting stupid. And for the most part, I like to take them with me. Not all the time, but for the most part, when I'm out, unless I have errands to run or I'm going to go shopping, is the only time I really don't take them. But, like, right now, they're not with me. They're at home. Um, but, you know, they're doing great. And I will say, like, before I got dogs, I thought it was just going to be, like, you always think of something one way. Then when that thing changes... You're kind of like, that ain't exactly what I thought. It's kind of like when people become parents and they say, you're going to be grossed out by diapers and stuff like that. And after a while, you just get used to it. Uh, poop is poop. And that's kind of how I feel with my dogs. Like when they need something, I got to wipe something up. It's, it doesn't bother me as much as it did when I first got them. Now it's just kind of like, let's just get it up and then keep it pushing. That's where I be at. So for me... I can't see my life right now without them, which is crazy because I remember when I, at one point when I was going back and forth about getting a dog, I still wouldn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. Um, but when I got Zanati, I was very happy because she was so cute. She was so, you know, she still is cute. She's bad, but she still is cute and she still is small. She's smaller than Richie and I got him after her. But, you know, it's just when they're little and tiny is the point where I, I don't know if it's just me, I get, once they get over the certain hump, I guess when they get like their last little batch of shots and they're able to go outside and they can run around and do whatever, it makes me a little bit sad because I like the little baby stage where, and baby, you know, animals in the first most way are like baby humans. Like when Richie was little, I would literally, he would wake up, he would cry, I would feed him, he would poop when he, as soon as he got up, and then after that, I would run around like legit one time around the apartment and he would be so tired he would go back to sleep and he'll be sleeping about two three hours and I missed that point but now they want all of my attention and uh, that's why I ended up getting him in the first place because she she couldn't take when I would leave she couldn't take she couldn't I would leave her in the cage I would feed her she would be you know happy we would have played and now I'm like okay so now I gotta you know do this do this do this do that and she would scream, like scream where I would have to take her with me. So I had to get something that would change that. And she just kind of had the separation separation anxiety, I believe, because when I got her, she was so small. Because when I did get Richie, I got him at the appropriate time than when I was supposed to get him. Zanadi, I got at four weeks. Richie, I got at 10 weeks. So he's definitely not as, although he likes attention and he's a big baby is what he really is. What I did notice is the fact that he, um... He doesn't so much care about being separated from me unless I like let them in from being on a balcony and then I don't pay him any attention. He feels like, so you shaded me, right? That's the only time that I feel like he feels any type of way about me. Uh, other than that, I feel like he's great. You know, he's he can I can get out the car and he's fine. If I get out the car with Zanotti, oh my God, she just squilling, got an attitude, she mad. And I'm like, girl, what's wrong with you? Like, you acting like a crack. What's your crack, baby? Like, I got her from Compton. So I'm like, are you a crack, baby? So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I feel like I couldn't see my life without them. It's hard to think of how life would be if I didn't have them in it. So they're, they're definitely like a staple in my life. I look when certain things happen. I look at what ages they were when they used to play together. Well, they play together now, but when they were really smaller you know it was like it's like legit having two children so for me you know i'm kind of in a place now where i really want a toy dog or a teacup but they are so prone to dying they're so prone to having accidents they are so prone to you know just 
a plethora of health issues that I don't really necessarily think I want. Plus, they are very, 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 very expensive. And I, I get it. I don't like to purchase animals either. There's so many rescue animals that need a home. So I don't want to hear nobody preaching about, you know, I really think you shouldn't buy puppies. I get it. Um, and I ain't because they cost too much. Some of these dogs are down payments for fucking cars. And speaking of cars, I... Are you gonna go? Bitch, a blinker. A blinker is there for a fucking reason. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, my birthday is coming up. I've had this car for, I think, two, going on three years. So now I'm feeling like, you know, I'm kind of outgrown. This car is quite small as opposed to my life now. When I got this car, I did not have two dogs. When I got this car, I did not have a shit load of stuff that I would keep in my car. Um, and the car that I had previous to this was also a Beetle, but it was a um, it was a hard top. So my, I don't think y'all know how small my fucking trunk is. It is a little as shit. It looked like a Barbie trunk. So it's definitely smaller than what I am used to and I know I can't get anything but the sleeve that goes over my convertible in it. So I'm looking at new cars. I've test drove and everything. And that's kind of the thing that sucks for me right now is that I've test drove a Porsche Cayenne, which is obviously a four-door car and it's bigger, you know, than what I really want. But I was just weighing options. This house is good. Um, of course, I've test drove the Beetle. I've test drove pretty much everything bmw mercedes everything and i just can't necessarily justify like right now if i had the, a pick i would probably go get a g-wagon now the reason why i don't want to get a g-wagon is because i know for a fact that my note is going to be stupid and i just don't want a car that is that big i just like how it looks like if they had like a mini version of that i would so fuck with it but um it's just too big of a car for me i got two small dogs and it's me i don't barely rarely ever have my friends with me enough to have to justify that much space and i'm a, a little car driver i like my shit to be very small so i don't know it's just you know it we'll see but most likely at this point i'm gonna stick with my beetle and just get a newer version of it because of the simple fact that i just don't want to go outside of what i know um, and everything that I have seen that I can't afford, which is quite a few things, I just don't never really see the point of it. Like, I don't want to dip into my shoe money to pay my car note for a car that I really just don't want. That just don't make no sense, you know? So, yeah, I, I'm on my way home. I was going to go walk. Obviously, I was going to go bike riding, but I just decided it gets a little loud. Um, so, yeah, I will catch y'all in my next one. I just wanted y'all to take a ride or whatever. Yeah.